So kicking off today in Cape Town is the 17th World Conference on Tobacco or Health, with the South African Department of Health playing a key role. It takes place every, uh, once every three years and attracts thousands of academics, health professionals, NGOs and public officials from more than 100 countries. Major event. And some new legislation has been announced with regards to tobacco here in South Africa. And we are now joined by the Acting Director of Health Promotion, Laratu Mahura. Rato, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Um, there's so many angles that we could take from this, and I would imagine you approach a, a time like this from a, with a, a same sort of bewilderment. Where do we even begin? Because it's a massive hill we climbing. But let's start with tobacco legislation. What has changed? What is the, the big change that we've seen? That is ex exactly what everybody out there is, is sort of waiting to hear yeah. about. We're looking at just four key areas. It's not complex. We're talking, we're talking about simple things. We're looking at plain packaging. You still remember that in South Africa, our cigarette packets do not have pictorial warnings. Yeah. And you still remember that um, they are not like plain. Plain in a sense, you still remember the olden days when we used to buy meat and we wrap it with a brown paper. Yeah. That kind of plain packaging, it shouldn't have an opportunity for the tobacco industry to say, we can now use the packaging to advertise our products. To market, so yeah. you make it plain, and then you also put pictorials as health warnings. You also put text that actually tells the consumers that it's not good to use the products. Education. But now the other focus was that we've been over the years looking at um, cigarette packets, but we want to extend it to other tobacco products. And then the other thing that we're looking at is... Um, the 100% smoke-free areas. When you go to restaurants currently, you know there's legislation allowing 25% uh, 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 smoke Smoking areas. Area. Yeah, we're saying we want to do away with that. In, in a sense that even those people that are not part of the smoking areas also get to, to consume polluted yeah. air because the, Secondly, air, yeah. the air particles move to the other side. And then there are other areas that we're looking at, you know, uh, certain outdoor areas, your stadia, your beaches, and um, hospitals, you know, except for rehab hospitals, that should be smoke-free areas. Um, and we also need to legislate, you know, how far should you be standing from a building where the public is? You know, people get out and at the doorstep, they are there You're and they right are smoking. There, yeah. We don't want that. And then the tobacco industry is using a point-of-sale display. When you go to your supermarkets, your pick and pace and all that, you see they are advertising their products there at the point of sale. We want to do away with that. Out of sight, out of mind. mind. So, yeah. I, I like the fact uh, that you've taken a, a very direct, simple but very direct approach. One thing that I have to ask is e-cigarettes, alternatives, hooker pipes. Do people know how dangerous those are for your health? We kind of see them as being a softer alternative. Are they healthier? Are they just as dangerous? How do you feel? They are dangerous. You, you know... You can't position them as, if you want to quit, use the water pipe, use the e-cigarettes, yeah. it's less harmful. When you're using tobacco products, harm is harm, period. Don't just go beating around the bush to say it's not harmful. At the end of the day, people are dying. And worse off with water pipes and hookah pipes, they are putting other ingredients, not only nicotine, concoction of drugs and all that. So it depends on who has come up with the recipe for the water pipe. <laughs> now, the e-cigarettes, we tend to see promotion of the smoking behavior and people using it dually. Sunny, you know, yeah, you want to quit, again, you want yeah. to quit, you're smoking the cigarette at the same time, you're smoking the e-cigarette. So what, what happens there? High levels of nicotine content. So you actually overdose aging. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I, I hope people are taking that on board. One of the many revelations that I'm sure will get driven mm. home now. Um, just very quickly, how can people get involved, get your message? Um, what's the conference all about in terms of getting that message out there? From the National Department of Health, we already started to work on Saturday. We had a youth conference on Monday. Uh, we had youth from different countries and then all the youth from youth ambassadors from the different provinces in South Africa. But what we're trying to introduce them to is the tobacco-free generation yeah. movement, you know. We, we failed as adults to, to help people to reduce smoking, but we think now we need to think of a generation whereby maybe in future we have a generation that is smoke-free. So this movement, we're actually teaching them how to 
take the message across to their peers, to schools, those that are Do in schools, those that are yeah. out of schools. Yeah, the program is continuously running even during the period of the conference. Lorato, thank you so much. We could probably sit for about two hours and, and talk about the ins and outs here, but thank you so much for joining us this morning and the efforts of you and your team. All the best of luck. I know this is a very important conference for you. So good luck, and I love the fact that we are broadcasting a message of a smoke-free generation. It's not going to come from us. It's going to come from you mm. doing it for yourself.